I think we can get started. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so, Alberto Vargas, the Associate Director of, of LASIS, and it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Raquel Gonzalez Paraiso, who, of course, is not new to Madison. It's great to have you back. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, Raquel got her PhD in ethnomusicology here uh, at UW Madison. And since we relocated to Mexico, to Veracruz, Jalapa, Veracruz, does research on ethnomusicology, particularly with uh, song. Mm -hmm. uh, Raquel, the, her area of interest is uh, cultural politics of music and music production of place, identity, and ethnicity. Uh, Raquel also teaches at the Universidad de Veracruzana. And uh, I, I was seeing here in the bio that she has a Spotify and a YouTube uh, site, uh, Musicos Tradicionales de Mexico, or Traditional Musicians from Mexico, that I'm, I'm eager to go and check. And uh, today's lecture is uh, really fascinating because uh, traditional music in, in Mexico for some time was the um, exclusive domain of men but it, it is changing, it's changed. So Raquel is gonna share with us part of her research on women's presence in contemporary songs in Mexico. So Raquel, welcome. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you everyone for, for being here. It's really, really good to, to be here and see familiar faces. Um, Daily life in Mexico could not be understood without music. At any given time, you can hear conjunto, ska, rock, pop, banda, jazz, mariachi, Mexican regional music, flamenco, religious music, blues, pop, cumbia. Music, often quite loud, is everywhere in private and public spaces. The amount of traditional music with a myriad of musical subgenres in every region is impressive as well. Within that big soundscape, today I'm going to talk about the presence of women in contemporary Mexican song. Um, it's a macro genre that appears throughout Mexico marked by regional differences. I will focus on three of these regional zones, those of Tierra Caliente, uh, right here, that are called zones calentanos, when Tierra Caliente is the part of Guerrero, Terra Calenteño, which is in Michoacán. I will focus on Sones Jarochos, which is the Sotavento region and occupies the spaces of uh, Veracruz State, Oaxaca, and Tabasco. And Sones Huastecos or Huapangos that belong to the Huasteca region, a uh, multilingual, multi ethnic region, Northern Veracruz, Tamaulipas, and three and four other um, uh, states in Mexico. Um, the different, um, as I interview women, and I have, as I have been interviewing women for this particular project that I um, that I'm talking today about, um, the the topic gets more nuanced and more complicated. What we, what I thought is gonna it was gonna be like you know simple answers. There is never a simple answer, and each particular woman. Uh, female musician from different regions, they have a particular um, way to talk about the questions that I have been asking. Even if each region in Mexico has undergone different processes, most women agree that a strong reconfiguration of gender roles is currently taking place. Undeniable, the current Mexican song scene could not be understood without the presence of women performers, producers, and music makers. Their presence is even more noticeable as until recently, the scene was traditionally dominated by men and the role that women are involved in at present once was nearly the exclusive domain of men. Now, as I said in my abstract, traditional music in Mexico is no longer what it was when rowdy characters revealed in fiestas or cantinas of limits to any self-respecting woman. Moreover, women's presence is particularly relevant in Mexican society where traditional gender roles are pervasive and gender stereotypes continue to permit intersubjective relationships within people's socialization processes. 
Gender stereotypes, the basis of gender identity construction, are internalized through socialization agents such as family, school, and media, and remain rooted in the subconscious. Stereotypes prevail and become very powerful as they arti are articulated through social and cultural conditions and built over time by political, economic, cultural, and ideological reasons. We can understand, uh, understand the shift women are playing in key roles in Son across Mexico as a reflection of wider economic, social, and political trends is reflected in the sonic and affective landscape of these music scenes. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Mexican um, social conditions in the 80s, from the 80s through to the 20s. Mexico's neoliberal economy and politics in the 1990s, as well as the rise of the internet facilitated greater cultural mobility in Mexican society. Warnings that globalization threatened cultural values and customs were behind a few of the cultural projects that were established at the time. And NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, was a reminder of the influence of new international enterprises on national economies. In 2018, the US, Canada, and Mexico reached a new trade deal, the United States, Mexico, Canada Agreement to replace NAFTA. Globalizing processes have far reaching social consequences. Viewed positively, they dismantle all forms of marginalization and domination and make new forms of democratization and cultural multiplicity imaginable. Mexico's political opening and neoliberal tendencies of the 90s and the, 2000, and the 2000s caused a gradual democratization of the media as well. At present, with a population of almost 130 million, Mexico is among the 15 largest economies in the world and the second largest economy in Latin America. The country has solid macroeconomic institution, is open to trade, and has a diversified manufacturing base connected to global value chains. Over the last three decades, though, according to the World Bank, Mexico has under underperformed in terms of growth, inclusion, and poverty reduction compared to similar countries. From 2000 to, to, to 2010, middle class in the country went from 38.4 to 42.4 uh, percent, and 55.1 of households belonged to low class. At present, about 40, 47 million of the total population are neither poor nor rich. That's how they defined the status. Middle class population in urban areas in 2010 was 50.1%, while, while the same in rural areas was 28%. I'm mentioning this because migration from rural to urban areas is a real pro problem in, in, in Mexico in general. In 2022, urban population was 103, about, and in rural population was um, uh, 23,000 for us to see the difference. Most of the countryside is flying to the, to the big city. In the last 20 years, Mexico increased actions regarding social policy. Social programs aimed at the most vulnerable population have increased their coverage and increased their budget. Before 2019, the main social programs were mostly conditional transfers. In the current federal administration, these programs were replaced with others that lack the characteristic of conditionality. The country went from right center pre-institutional revolutionary party with President Enrique Peña Nieto, who won election in 2012, to left wing Morena, Movimiento Regeneración Nacional in 2018 with Andrés Manuel López Obrador as president. Now in June, we'll have elections again. What happened in terms of traditional music? Since the mid 1980s, in response to a scarcity of traditional culture and the deterioration of social spaces for traditional music in both urban and rural areas, researchers, musicians, and cultural promoters, among others, began to organize music festivals and cultural projects that function as cultural centers or schools as vehicles for the sharing and revitalization of traditional music cultures. 
Trad traditional music, such as the Mexican song, became a way of exploring identities, realizing that such music represented the values and aesthetics of their forebears and could help them to discover what they valued the most, as well as create their own means of expression. Different regions in Mexico underwent different processes. Since then, the community that was created around the sun experiences in festivals, encuentros, and cultural projects has changed and evolved in different ways. Even if the idea of experiencing music to create community persists, the experience is not as much about rescuing vernacular music, the transmission of cultural heritage, or the need to reconnect with a past. It is about a way to experience music, share life, and convivencia. It is an expression of present social dynamics and ideas and a way to reconnect with others. In some instances, it is a way to gain freedom and empower women through music. It is a way of making a living as well. Mm -hmm. Women have worked their way in. If women during the 80s and 90s were sparsely present and had to prove themselves to win the respect of many, New generations of women, particularly since the mid 2000s, have entered the scene more fluidly, knowing that the musical space belonged to them as much as it did to them. It did to men. Nothing is a clean cut though. And this fluidity is determined by context, rural urban conditions and people's sociocultural status. I see this inclusion and evolving presence of women in the rich traditional music culture of Mexico as consequence of several factors that are part of broader economic, social, and political processes in public and private spheres. First, since the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, as part of the revival movement, cultural and educative, and educative uh, projects run by private or state initiatives built a new generation of traditional musicians. Son Jarocho in Southern Veracruz started in the mid eighties. Son Huasteco um, in Northern Gulf regions, Veracruz, Tamaulipas and the other states started in the mid nineties and Tierra Caliente of Guerrero and Michoacán about 10, year, 10 years later. These projects were gender inclusive and were run by musicians or cultural promoters in their fifties or sixties. The children they, they taught at the time are now part of a second generation of music leaders and musicians that are in their 30s. And the offsprings of these late projects are the new generation of musicians in Tierra Caliente, the Sotavento region, and the Huasteca. Led by men and women, these projects created safe spaces for children to learn and grow into their musical traditions. At present, projects that were pioneers yes. in rescuing the musical tradition and targeted traditional music as a tool for community building are reconsidering other approaches that reflect present day needs. Elizabeth Avendaño, who is part of um, Musica y Baile Tradicional, an association that have been working on music and cultural projects related to music from Tierra Caliente, such as teaching, researching, recording, working with older musicians and so on for the last 20, 25 years. Elizabeth talks about the importance of adapting to new social conditions. She and her team, um, she and her team are focusing on organizing activities and projects with a gender perspective that could have, for example, a direct impact on the lyrics the music use. She says, we need new lyrics that speak of our new social reality. Often lyrics in the Mexican song tradition talk about love and women using stereotype images mm -hmm. and misogynist content. Mm -hmm. Up until now, um, there was not a possibility of changing or women did not see the possibility of um, change those lyrics. Mm -hmm. Now in the last five years, it's like they don't care anymore. They just, <laughs> they, they just do it and it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. Not necessarily they have to talk about women, men, but it's to talk about anything with women perspective and sensitivity. Musica y Baile Tradicional is working as well on reinforcing music as a family activity. Family is nuclear to ignite positive and progressive changes regarding stereotype gender views. 
gender roles and stereotypes are difficult to break, but if the young ones grow up within inclusive conditions, they will probably repeat inclusive patterns. Mm -hmm. So they move from, from working with um, big groups or just um, not targeting the family. And now they are thinking we need to include older women mm -hmm. and older men. We are gonna see a little bit of a project that they are doing that they are calling um, Dime Morenita Mia. They are pandangos that they make in uh, family patios. Um, pandango is a, is a gathering, it's a fiesta, but a fandango involves preparing the food, preparing the drinks, it's a communal celebration. And this is a fandango in Tierra Caliente. So, uh, video? Paralo. No. I met the the group of people of musica y baile tradicional back in the in mid nineties. Um, since then, they have been working in the rescue you know, of um, traditional music from Michoacan. Yeah. Yeah. Start thinking of questions we can talk about yeah. it you know, later. So they are targeting families thinking, well, if the mom or the dad can work on you know the boy or the girl that and will be a positive influence That's that's what they what they are doing. Other projects in Tierra Caliente region are focusing on activities aimed at women girls as they feel um, a bit more comfortable when they are among other women. They don't feel threatened to play up to standards and they don't feel judged when they are among, among women. While inclusion worked within the cultural projects, that all these cultural projects that I have mentioned, some women feel harshness within the reality of traditional music scenes. A few of my interviews talk about boys to men commenting behind the scenes about women being less able than men to play music and keep on assuming that they should be, women should be just dancers. One of the traditional roles women have played for many years within the musical tradition. Jenny Raquel from Trio Huasteco Las Amapolas mentioned how male trios, particularly in media, would get comments about their music performance, while female trios would get comments about their physical appearances, dresses, and so forth. Eh, a veces cuando trios formando por hombres se enfrentan o videos, está la concepción de interacción haciendo contenido, se ven comentarios este, acerca de su contribución y, y, y me he dado cuenta que eh, en este tipo de contenido, pero con mujeres, ah, predominan más los comentarios acerca de su aspecto, acerca de, de la vestimenta, acerca y, 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 y no acerca de la inclusión, que es lo más importante. La, la presencia femenina dentro del ambiente también es una fuente para 
parte de las personas que estamos aquí y estamos ejecutando, estamos, estamos también estamos creando. Ahora sí que no somos las mujeres, somos las mujeres que estamos aquí para, para que escuchen lo que nos lo que gusta, para que siempre, desde siempre, siempre lo más que tenemos. Sorry, the audio is not great. I just did this interview and there was a music festival happening here and the interview <laughs> to happen. Ra uh, Jenny Raquel is 16. Mm -hmm. I, I met her um, about three years ago in, um, in a music camp where, uh, where I was teaching. Um, she's a professional musician still and she's at the university in college. Um, and it's just fantastic to listen to her, how she owns her own ideas about being a woman and having the right to play music and enjoying it, being aware of um, men behavior or some of the harassment of the or the comment, but really going strong and be um, defending, you know, we we are musicians and we we don't we should not be judged, just like you look well, or you, know, you have these earrings, or how beautiful you are. Um, for other women, this is not that much the case. They did not go um, over these kind of comments, um, but they acknowledge the fact that other women have opened their way for them and strongly believe on their musicianship, as Jenny Raquel did, for their success <laughs> as musicians. Muchas veces sí se reciben esas críticas de él, que era mujer, pero ya son muy pocas porque a partir de, o sea, no somos las primeras y, este, y gracias a que hubo mujeres antes, eh, no tuvimos, no, este, se nos complicó en esa parte de decir eh, que tienes que ganar un lugar y tienes que demostrar, ahora sí que es más que nada por el gusto de la gente y cómo eres como músico y qué interpretas como músico, más que nada, más allá de una cuestión de género. Es more, es, es, um, the important thing for her too is um how a, a musician you are and how you perform, and that goes more beyond the gender a gender issue. Um, Areli plays in a trio called Lucero Huasteco. We are going to listen to the to her later on performing, and it's also from the Huasteca region. Thus, even if we have come long ways, a long road is ahead of us. Women in rural areas have a much harder time entering the music scene than women in urban in urban areas. From Tierra Caliente, Karina Perez Gomez talks to me about the difficulties women from rural areas have to go to college and escape gender roles imposed upon them. Women are educated to be good wives and good moms. Leslie Gutierrez Aviles, another musician from Tierra Caliente, comments on the few women that can participate in fandangos as dancers or musicians because they have to be in the kitchen serving guests or taking care of children. Women, when it comes to participating, do some more dancing. New generation of women are taking over the music scene by not only dancing, but playing instruments, singing, and organizing events. Let's listen to Karina and Leslie playing with the group El Gusto por el Son, musicians who once were students at Baile y Musica Tradicional with Elizabeth and, and her team, and that now run their own musical educative projects. And this is No Se Olvides del, del Palomo is a jarabe from, from Michoacán. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jarabe. It's a jarabe from Michoacan where they have um, their different um, different zones put all together. You improvise in the middle. You can say and you can sing about anything that you want to sing. They are they were preparing to go to the national national meeting of mariachi that mm -hmm. happened every year. So they are talking here. Our our group comes will be will be performing. And Leslie and Karina are the girls playing and singing. And who were students of that first group of ballet musica musica traditional. A second reason I see for women's inclusion in the traditional music scene is the rise of middle class engagement in some Mexican. Middle class families valuing cultural education gave opportunities to their daughters and sons to learn and experience music. Again, conceptualization of traditional gender roles would change along changes in household economics that grew out of urban urbanization industrialization and the growth of women in the workforce in general. Migration from rural to urban areas resulted in greater opportunities for women's increasing engagement in work outside the household. Women's work opportunities reflected in independence um, from men at all levels and the possibility to make choices for themselves and their offsprings. But again, in rural setting, women's work still tends to be strictly cir circumscribed. I would like to play a musical example from a musical project in Chicontepec, Veracruz in the Huasteca region. Javier Hernández started a project called Semillas del Balcón. Chicontepec is a community that is called um, El Balcón de la Huasteca, the balcony of the Huasteca region, because it's very, it's very high, it's beautiful where, where it is located. Um, and I, I'm bringing him here because he is the son of a single mother. Um, um, so she um, she also has a daughter who plays and sing with Javier. Um, so we are gonna listen to this group of musicians um, that is called Semillas del Balcón and they are playing Cielito Lindo, the Huasteca mm -hmm. version in the Huasteca Museum. It's just in a festival that took place last Sunday, last Saturday in Tampico. Tamaulipas. Yeah, have you standing up in, in this photograph? Thank you, Pancho. <laughs> Thank you. 
You like it? Uh, These are half of the, the children who are part of the of the taller, they call it, of the group. I mean, it's impressive. I would like to mention that there are many other groups like this one in different parts of Mexico. In, in Chicontepec, where Javier teaches, there is another um, another taller, another group. It's called Escuela Balcón Huasteco. They have about 70, 80 students, um, boys and girls who are uh, playing violin, um, jarana, huasteca, and quinta, where the, that are the instruments that you are seeing um, in, the, in the video. A project with Cecilin in Tepecintla, which Sonita Vera started about uh, 25 years ago. Um, in different regions, like in Loma Bonita in the southern Veracruz, they are teaching in this, the same the same kind of groups, Son, um, Son Jarocho and many others. So um, it's impressive mm -hmm. how you know, this revival came to be and the support of middle class parents to their, their children. Mm -hmm. A third reason for inclusion um, of women in the, in the Mexican traditional music scene is the internet and social media. Yes. Internet and social media have facilitated the prof professionalization of women's groups. Cecilia Boeta, a Huasteco musician, talks about now, uh, talks about how social media is a window to reach to many young musicians and how he uses um, um, social media to be a positive influence and a role model for her followers. Ahora que entra las redes sociales, yo trabajo mucho en mis redes sociales, todas mis cuatro cosas y poeta, y cuando yo me presento, trato de promocionarme a través de él. Creo que es una ventana, un portal donde muchos jóvenes tienen acceso, incluso niños tienen acceso, y a lo mejor este, mi, la mayor parte de mi público digital es gente adulta, pero sí me encuentro uno que otro comentario de niñas o de jóvenes que me dicen, me gusta el guapango y me identifico contigo porque eres como una versión a lo mejor no, no tan este, como ellos la tenían marcada, ¿no? Del señor eh, grande, adulto mayor que tocaba guapango. Yo soy una mujer que toca guapango y me no, joven. Entonces, pues, encuentran ahí en un poco de, de, de cercanía que se identifican o que pueden sentir ese, esa atracción por el guapango. Me pasa, considero que la, el internet ha influido mucho y que pues, te muestras tocando en videos, en fotografías, y pues, eso motiva a los mejor también a que se animen a tocar más guapas. Sorry, I don't have um, closed captions for translations. I'm sorry, next time I, I would do that. Um, it's, I, I didn't have the time to do that, and I apologize. Um, Ceci is a particular, it's very interesting case as well. He is, um, she's 27, 28, I think, and she's very successful. She lives, um, she's professional, professional mu musician, and she lives, makes her living by playing music. Um, and so she has worked a lot on, on her musical skills. Um, she's a very good musician, but also she loves the fact that she dresses up and this all that also to bring her womanship to the stage. That's what she, what she said. In the past, one of the problems for women to be part of the music scene was the lack of role models. Few female musicians made a living playing music. In Tierra Caliente, Doña Crescencia Borja from Rancho, Rancho El Chocolate, Turicato, was known for playing violin. She was blind and her father, a musician himself, drove her to play music to, so the family could make a living. In the Huasteca and Sotavento, there, there were a few women like Crescencia. Areli from Trio Lucero Huasteco tells me how having role models and seeing other girls and women playing music made her wanting to play Huasteco music. Let's listen to her. Siendo honesta, a mí al principio no me gustaba el guapango porque no lo veía como género para mujeres, porque no tenía esos referentes dentro de la música. Sino hasta que yo salgo a eventos de guapango y me doy cuenta que sí hay más mujeres, que sí hubo antes que yo, este, mujeres que marcaron a la historia para que yo pudiera estar tocando. 
que se enfrentaron, creo yo, a situaciones mucho más difíciles que nosotras, a, a una ocasión que una señora nos dijo, mejor, o sea, una misma mujer, mejor aprenden a hacer tortillas, estar aprendiendo a tocar un instrumento. Entonces, eso siento que, o sea, si nosotros no lo no sentimos, no quiero pensar lo que pasa con todas aquellas mujeres que hicieron en el banco. Entonces, yo empiezo a, a sentir el copango cuando yo veo más mujeres que también están dentro del copango. No es algo como que yo sentía dentro de mí, a pesar de haber nacido en una región completamente huasteca y netamente de copango. So if you say having role models is really important, you know, I don't even want to think what, you know, all the women had to go through because even now there was another woman who told her, told the trio, you better learn how to make tortillas rather than learning how to play an instrument. So she was talking about this. Let's listen to Lucero Huasteco because um, they, yeah, it's, um, the, the trio comes from a very rural area. <laughs> Internet empower women to make their choices, to create their own images and move forward into the professional world. The group Caña Dulce y Caña Brava is an example of pioneer female group in San Jarocho that I would like to play a little bit for you to listen to a song tradition that now is very popular in Mexico, San Jarocho, and in United States and in, in Europe. This, um, this concert was in 2018 and they were performing in El Zócalo in Mexico City with an introduction from um, poet improviser um, Evelyn Acosta. Así es como saludamos esta tarde el escenario. Así es como saludamos esta tarde el escenario en un sitio legendario que a la historia le heredamos. Verán cómo si escuchamos después de que el verso acaba, al pecho se le destraba cualquier tristeza y quebranto mientras extiende su canto caña dulce y caña brava. El Zócalo, el Zócalo es el lugar en que nos hemos reunido para dar solo un sentido a un tema en particular. Es el de poder lograr un mejor acontecer, el de por fin libre ser y ser visibilizadas para que sean escuchadas nuestras voces de mujer. ¡Bravo! ¡Bravo, Evelyn! Caña Dulce, Caña Brava, they are touring right now in Boston and um, in a few other, other places in the East Coast. As a fourth reason for inclusion, 
um, new cultural and social policies in organizations such as UNESCO, the Education 2023 Agenda, assumed by countries such as Mexico, Plan Nacional de Desarrollo 2019-2024, prioritized gender equality and women's rights. Although these vertical movements are difficult to trace, political discourses along popular ones about women's rights are bringing more visibility to the issue. A few projects focusing on gender have taken advantage of government initiatives promoting gender equality. Um, one of these um, projects, for example, it was a, a, a project that Trio Mariposas Huastecas did. They created new music with lyrics talking about inclusion. And um, the, the little part that we are going to listen is going to be, um, the, their lyrics are going to be talking about stereotypes and they need to get away from, from them. This trio is Mariposas, Mariposas Huastecas, and they are in their 20s. So this this stanza, for example, talks about the imposition of stereotypes about colors and why boys have to be dressed or use one color or girls. Um, you know, uh, they are as, assumed or tied with, a, with another color. Another project that got recognition from the government and got a grant was an Al Alanis project called Al Son de las Mujeres. It's a project that seeks to promote and strengthen female integration in traditional music from the Churumuco, Huacana region in Sierra Caliente of Michoacán. The project is a platform to support and empower female performers and women's groups in community contexts. It was conceived as a comprehensive musical training to teach and learn traditional repertoire from that region in Michoacán and for the renewal of poetry with a gender, gender perspective. In addition to opening the door to women to the musical scene, this project has allowed participants to recognize themselves as agents of change in their communities. Summing up a few points many female musicians across regions agree on, they acknowledge and are thankful for women before them who open doors for them to be able to be present on the contemporary music scene. Um, they know the need to, to visibilize uh, women's presence and their ability to play music. They need to create new lyrics and get away from those that cosify women. They need to have or to be role models that inspire girls for new generations to come to play music. They need to give women the chance to choose what they want to do. Traditional music scene is still machista and female musicians feel they have to prove that they can play. Traditional gender roles and stereotypes are more present in rural areas. Professional women musicians would not have made it without their parents' support. Women must deal with the security issues when playing gigs in particular places in ranches and late gigs. Alcohol, alcohol abuse is a problem. Most of the repertoire was originally created by, by or for men and women had to adapt to it. Only gradually women are daring to change tuning of the instruments to feed higher vo voices, re higher registers for their voices, and personal interpretation of sones that originally were bravos or fuertes, and um, that they were, you know, supposedly some of this music has to be strong and just perform like, and they want to bring another touch to it. 
The big challenge for inclusion is not women, but men, as they feel threatened by the shift and loss of their traditional roles and owner ownership of music scenarios. And now I'm part of that movement as a researcher, musician, composer, musical arranger, and a teacher of young students. Like Elizabeth said, I feel that I'm a role model for some girls, women, as I try to be present as much as I can, help empowering girls to play music, grow as musicians and human beings, be creative, independent, free to choose whatever they want. I have met many of these young musicians at music, camp, at music camps where I taught in 2018 and 2021. Um, I have taught and I keep on teaching some of these girls. I feel moved by their art artistry and musicianship. And I feel part of something. We are moving forward and it is an unstoppable force. There is always someone who leads the way and someone who continues it. So for those women and girls and for them to keep on playing music, we would like to play a song huasteco called Mariposa Sonteña. And for all of you, <laughs> support the arts. Y Raquel Daphne está aquí. Daphne está ahí. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Okay. Está um, sonriendo. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much to everyone who is, um, you know, present at this conference from um, from afar. Um, we are going to play this song, and then we would I would like um, for Daphne to talk. Daphne is a student of mine, and she is part of Javier's group, or Semillas del Balcón group, and she's ten. She started playing violin when she was six and um, he just, you know, won it. So we can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Son Sonteño, a song Huasteco from Northern Veracruz. And it's a particular variant of that song Huasteco. Pancho broke his arm <laughs> two months ago and he just started to play. Okay. Are you? <laughs> Mariposa, mariposa, mariposa azul celeste, mariposa, mariposa, mariposa azul celeste. Tienes que llamar, aunque la vida me cueste. Tienes que llamar, aunque la vida me cueste. Thank you. So um, it's fantastic to see so many young girls and women playing traditional music in in Mexico, no? And. Uh, Anyway, um, I think that it's a way to get a freedom and a way to look at life in in ways that are just positive. 
So thank you very much for listening. It, it, it will be nice if we can bring a conversation. I would like for, for Daphne to talk to, to us and see, um, you know, asking her why she started playing music, for example. Daphne, ¿estás ahí? Sí, está ahí. ¿Nos ve? Aquí estoy, maestra. I'm here. Daphne, ¿cuándo empezaste a tocar violín? Thank you. Mande. ¿Cuándo empezaste a tocar violín? Empecé a los seis años, pero desde los cinco a mí me gustaba mucho bailar carnaval. Entonces, eh, ahí conocí al profe Javier y le dije que si me podía enseñar violín, pero él me dijo que estaba muy chiquita. Pero yo no le hice caso y le insistí y me dijo, y yo iba a gimnasia y gimnasia estaba a un lado de la casa del profe Javier y yo le dije a mi mamá que yo quería tocar el violín. Y como siempre llegaba y estaba tocando violín Javier, pues a mí me emocionaba más y yo quería practicar eso. Entonces un día le dijo mi mamá al profe Javier y ya me regalaron, bueno, mi, me dio el profe Javier mi, mi violín. Me lo compraron mis papás, fue mi, imprimir, mi primer violín y yo bien emocionada. <risa> Y pues ya empecé a tocar violín y pues as, me gustó mucho. Y para mí siento que es el instrumento más sencillo de tocar. She really loves to dance carnival. It's a carnival is a, commu it's a community and a communal dance that takes place in that part of Veracruz. And she uh, um, she started to go to, to listen to the music and she said that um, she went to, to to play. And anyway, the, that music um, um, she just insisted on on that and went to ask Javier, his her her teacher. Um, our plane, and he said, "No, you are too little. So you cannot start playing violin." But still, she wanted, and she insisted, and that's, that's why she she is playing. She is playing violin. Um, Daphne, ¿en algún momento pensaste que por ser mujer no podías tocar música? Eh, sí, porque <laughs> pues en aquí. Todos son, había más tríos de hombres que de mujeres y, y pues sí me desaminaba porque pues dije pues soy la única niña en el taller que hay porque en ese entonces Javier apenas empezaba con su taller, yo fui la primera niña, de ahí todos eran pues hombres, y ya de ahí se fue interrando que su prima, su hermana, y así. Gracias. I'm asking her if she ever thought that being a, a woman was an impediment to start playing music, and she said yes, because um, she was the first student that Javier had in, in the workshop, in the taller, and um, primero. And but then but anyway she started now they are they are many you know, many girls. Um Daphne nos quieres contar algo más? Do you want us to tell us something else? Sí. Mm, a ver, ¿qué les puedo contar? <laughs> mm. 
Dafne, ahora hay muchísimas niñas en el taller, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Te sientes arropadas por ellas? ¿Te sientes igual que, como, que cuando empezaste? Eh, no, no me siento igual, porque cuando empecé, pues, yo era la, la chiquita, ¿no? Entonces, eh, sí. Pero ahorita que ya hay más niñas, ya me siento más segura, más mejor, ¿no? Bien. Muchísimas gracias, Dafne. Gracias, Dafne. Gracias. 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 She was a little one. She was six and she was still very tiny thin. And now she's with the others. Um, do you have questions? Are there comments yeah, I that think, you would like to make? I think we have about five minutes for questions. Okay, yeah. yeah. Preguntas. Uh, in cualquier idioma, right? Yeah, in cualquier what? idioma. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> Spanish, English, or Spanish. Los dos funcionan. No anymore. Y si hay preguntas por el, uh, el uh, Zoom, if there are Questions on Zoom, uh, pueden escribirles aquí y puedo leerlos. I can, I can um, ask them out loud. Yeah. 